Thank you very much. It's uh, quite an honor to be here. Um, what uh, I'm going to present, uh, I'm the original research is made by three people, which I choose the one that make it to here. Um, it's not that the other two got lost, it's just they couldn't make it. Um, so what uh, we started as a, as a profiling exercise end up uh, to be a tool that we uh, release and uh, we're going to show it uh, how actually we started from doing uh, DNA malware profiling to actual building a, a full-fledged uh, tool to, uh, to be able to, uh, to achieve that. So um, when we start with this research, we, we kind of knew that we are going to encounter a few, um, few things that is going to be quite compli complicated. Um, you know, we have, a, you know, uh, in terms of issues of malware hunters, malware researchers, there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, code uh, that is being obfuscated, transformed, or, you know, being uh, manipulated in a way that makes, you know, uh, malware uh, researchers make the work uh, quite difficult, you know, in terms of data, in terms of data obfuscation techniques, in terms of, you know, trying to evade, you know, detection from antivirus companies, right? So we, and then also we have, you know, polymorphic code and stuff like that. So we kind of knew that we are, you know, it's going to be quite complicated to achieve something like this, you know, to do actual profiling or, or clustering of malware, right? And on the other hand, um, you know, in the past, the, there was, you know, it was, uh, it was, uh, was, I would say it was easier to actually detect malware because, you know, uh, it was um, often uh, very expensive to compute uh, CPU time to build a new, uh, a new version of a new interaction, you know, a new version of the malware. So these days, uh, CPU time is, is, is meaningless, uh, the cost. So, so builders these days, build, you know, the malware file, uh, executable, whatever it is, macro, whatever, uh, for each interaction, for each time it needs to be, you know, launched, right? So uh, on that, we have a note here from the Verizon analysis of that data breach that they profile um, 40 million malware uh, records and out of, you know, through multiple companies and out of that, they only found 20,000 uh, hashes that were present in multiple companies. That means um, the majority of them are actually unique, right? So we kind of knew that. So, but we still do, you know, picture the problem here, and then we encounter with stuff like this, where, where you know, a lot of antivirus company put a lot of detailed reports where you know it's actually for not so deep, uh, techy, heavy people to understand what it means, um, uh, all this data and, and not uh, like an easy way to, to represent that data. Because, uh, you know, at the end of the report, you're reading, and this is from Duku, from the people from Kaspersky. Um, this, like, it, it doesn't make too much sense when you read that. Well, you see, you know, something that looks like a SQL, and then you have IPIs there, and some DL name. but. It's actually difficult to have meaningful information out of those if you don't fully understand the whole picture, right? That also make complicated, you know, s signature and heuristics based detection on those things that you are you you see in those reports. So and they put a lot of detail, and at the very end they give you just a bunch of hashes, uh, and that's it. So it's like something. There needs to be something in the middle, right? So that's where you know we, we say uh, those are the. the the remainings of the gap when, when you see a report, you read some from Simon Tech for whatever company, and at the very end, you just put in a bunch of hashes, and it's like all diluted, you know, the information that you can action on top of those, right? So, um, example of that is that we'll still read those reports, and you see the specific things that you have out of those research. You put, I put just four examples here, um, just to make it quick. Just as Stanex, we know Stanex is, um, is, you know, we know what it is. Everybody knows what it is, or what it was. Uh, but we know that specific for Stanex, they use a, a PLC library from Siemens, Semantic, uh, that, you know, is using that DLL to execute uh, some commands and all that. We all know this story. So that, you know, the family used that as characteristics, specific characteristics on that, right? So and another one for 
you know, from ZU or ZBot, which is the backend malware. There's this specific region of the, in the file that has, you know, uh, has been almost the same across multiple, multiple families. So you have an actual characteristic out of that. Same goes for Dino, which is part of the animal farm, which is supposed to be a nation state uh, sponsor malware. Um, and also from, you know, I put an example of the Bangladesh hack, which the malware actually hook into a DLL to be able to, you know, uh, you know mob patches the code and, uh, and see all you know, the data transaction and that. So there are quite specific characteristics out of example those four that no matter what you do, you need to have those pieces of information, right? So imagine if you have a, a way to say, hey, I want to just search for this particular thing and come out, you know, results out of that, right? So just example, a stand next. Imagine again a way that you have, you know, put just, you know, uh, a Dino.exe and search that information out of a bunch of hashes. Again, imagine a way that you can put a section of the ha of the file and give you all, you know, all these other, you know, malware that matches that thing. And same goes for BB Swift for uh, giving you, uh, you know, all these files that have that reference they are within the file, um, w you know, in, in within the files itself, the reference text within the files. So that got us thinking, saying, wait, 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 wait. We can actually probably build a system to do, be able to achieve the research, we actually need to do build a system, a framework, to process the file in the way we think will get most value out of it. We're not just going to use like everybody like file-based hashes, which is easy to compute and faster. Everybody loves that. You know, everybody loves you know antivirus that you know, going after behavior. You know, it's faster than that. So we got us you know all these pieces thinking and say, wait, maybe we can build. Uh, DNA, well, well, I'm going to explain what, what DNA we, what DNA means for us, uh, to, you know, search that whatever is information is being recovered uh, out of those pattern and characteristics of build a search profile engine, but specific to the file type itself. When I mean file type, you know, the P, the executables has, you know, all the definitions or all, all the possibilities that the file type defines. And there's hundreds of those possibilities. If you go for file type of uh, office file, like a Word, uh, Word file have you know a lot of all the definitions. You know how many pages they have, how many words, how many is a, if there's a screenshot, and this is the size, this is the resolution. All those characteristics are within the file format, right? And on top of that, you know, Bert, uh, build a search capability on those, on, you know, on that data, rationalize, categorize all that data, so we can do, uh, at the very end, a large-scale malware analytics, right? So, you know, we package all these files, defining the format, and we defining each of those interactions and each of those, you know, components in a very rational database format. So we can query that information and make it look better, right? So now we're gonna. When I, one other thing I want to show is not like you know if we go for P file format, we have those all those you know ca uh, you know definitions on the file format. You know the file headers, the sections, resources, certificate size, versions, import table and export table. But the way it looks like this, I just you guys, I really don't want you to remember all this. I need you guys to picture something like this, right? Which, I don't know, it's a, it's a piece of motor. I, truly, I've just Googled the first one I pick it up. But imagine like a file, a malware, when you have all those small pieces that together, it makes it a whole thing, a whole working or operable thing. So why I will search for the entire thing when uh, maybe I, I change one small piece and of course, it becomes a different hash, right? So an example of this is if this is, a, I don't know, a piece of a car, and I steal this car from you, um, you know, and, you know, someone who uh, steal your car, painted in a different color, 
it's a still your car. It's just painted a different way, right? So the concept goes like this. So if we process all these you know, uh, files and we extract all the characteristics, characteristics possible, maybe we can find better ways to do search and to do matching and to do clustering, which is what we did. So uh, again, I don't want to see it like this. I want to more see you like this, like a whole set of pieces that come together to make a malware itself. So this is what we did. And to start to do some a little bit analytics on all the you know, rationalized information that we uh, extract for each of the files we process, and we process 30 million files, malware, we start clustering, doing clustering on each of the, of some of the files that we want to cluster. So in this case, is Duku. And this is very, actually very, very nice. Duku is, uh, supposed to be a nation state malware, supposed to be for you know, some uh, big government in America, right? So we can see if out of uh, one file, one data extraction, the first one, which is the red, uh, we have another one that it looks the same, the clustering is the same. The size of the bubble is, is how big and how, uh, what's the percentage of the similarity. And the others are the ones that you know have less percent of similarity from the father and goes like a spiral like that, right? So uh, this is something really, really beauty of this is this is the next chart, which is you know, out of the father, right, we start searching, you know, percent of similarity. And at some point, actually by thirty four point seven percent. What is Duku? It becomes Stanex. It becomes the second version of Stanex. And then it continues in the all the way below. And this is code. This is not like me like saying, oh, this is this is that. This is code. This is like functions, IPIs, resources, all crammed together, like scramble, you know, getting in small pieces and comparing the father the father, which is Duku, against all the other ones, one, the, the ones we have in 30 million uh, database set. So it could be that, you know, whoever built Stanex probably built Duku, or it could be that uh, the problem almost in the same way, ways, almost using the same techniques, almost using the same IPIs to be able to achieve that, right? An example like that is that two different pieces of two files that, that have you know a, a different hash value have you know the same IPI probably have the same size and the same date but of course they are different they have some small piece that makes the two files being different but for us those two things are the same because it shares the same functions resources and some other thing and this is just the driver for one of those um, nation, supposed to be nation state malware. So out of that, all this, we can get a lot more information out of the files. And that's the, I guess, the beauty of this, when you rationalize a lot of data and start making sense of that. And one of this, one of, one of the things we, we thought about it, we want to find what's the worst day for the user uh, in terms of malware activity. We say, okay, maybe it's, we go for file, uh, time, uh, file based time, we'll, find, we'll call it the worst day for users because a lot of malware being compiled in that day. Of course, we knew that you know, malware authors you know, the, modifies the, the file stamp for the files, so we had to, you know, uh, at, at the rate, at the, you know, before doing the actual research, we say for sure it's going to be epoch equals zero, which is the first, you know, the first uh, being modified, the time stamp to become zero, meaning it starts when, you know, in the 70s, the first of January. So, of course, the malware authors will clean that data, and we, when the majority of them will be like that, which we're wrong. 
And this is, is the beauty of this when you start processing data is that the data, something you actually think is the data is actually telling you what it is in reality. So we say we got this and we, the size of the bubbles are the size, you know, how many, you know, times are, you know, uh, that represent in the, in the, in the exercise, in the, in the summary that we did of all the files. And right there you have a file, the majority of them, or like a huge majority of them is like from 92. And we say like, this is wrong. It's like really wrong somewhere. It's really wrong. The second one, it was epoch equals zero, which is what I believe. But it was wrong. We were very wrong. So what is that date? When we say like, we started Googling and we found that for six different versions of Delphi, the linker was actually put in the same time stamp. It was hard coded in the linker that built the file. So we say, oh, that's it. It's the linker that live in it. And all those files seem to be, you know, Delphi old versions. And again, the data is telling us something different than it was, you know, in our mind. And we got this, we, we built another one. It's like, we said, we're going to cluster the same, same, absolutely same code. We determine, you know, what the code section in the file, which is something a little bit complicated, but we make it simple. Uh, and we say, we're going to cluster all the code that's actually been the same in the entire database set. And um, right there, we say, we're going to spot the family of CUs, then we're going to spot the family of CBOT, we're going to spot some of the families that well know has been sharing, you know, maybe the, the builder of the malware will actually, uh, you know, it will, it will do a lazy job, it will just modify a piece of the file and not the entire thing, and it will, will cluster all that data. And we're terribly wrong. The thing we forgot are the actual installers, you know, Nullsoft installer, you know, like the install shield that is used now, or the 7 C out extract and some other, you know, I think it's a Chinese installer somewhere. And, and again, something we thought about it, we forgot about installers. And then again, the data is talking back to us and say, you're wrong, what were you actually thinking? And also we said, we want to determine, you know, roughly out of the entire set, what's the actual you know, mean of the data in, in terms of percentage, what's the actual space uh, out of it. And it turns out to be like 100K is, is the average of all the malware that we have. And since we process a lot of files, we had to have a table which grabs all the import table of the, all the files that we process and have, you know, hum, what's the count for each of the IPI that is actually um, being used in the system. As you can see, out of the DL, kernel 32, get proc address is 12 million times uh, call in, within the files that we process. And we do this, this is actually very useful for something that I'm gonna show you, I hope, uh, right now, I hope it works. Uh, so you can see, you know, we have, for each of the file process, we do a count, we put it in, in there in the database, and we use this data to use it with some other connectors and, and produce, uh, you know, a better way to present data. So I'll give you an example. If we process a file that has been dumped in memory, all the import tables are absolutely broken. There's nothing you can do it. But still, the piece of text is within whatever you dump in the memory. So if I know this piece of text is an IPI that I have it in my database, I can relate that this program is using this IPI. So again, of data that is not useful or not working because the executable doesn't work, you can still get you know meaningful information out of that. And now it's uh, I'm gonna check this, uh, see if it works. So we we mentioned, um, and this is I hope we're gonna get beauty out of bad data. Imagine this, you know, for each IPI, I put kind of the size that represent within the entire set. So that's you know one of the you know, eight million function API. This is the build for a lock. Imagine the size of the bubbles are the size of how many count it represents in the entire database set, right? 
So we have that, you know, imagine that as, you know, in a universe, this uh, uh, galaxy has this planet that is like, it's called virtual, virtual log in this case. So imagine life. So imagine that this is the beauty of touch, that we can actually zoom out and becomes, you know, different planets. I'm still in the galaxy of uh, Canal 32. Imagine all the other different galaxies that are actually out there. And this is starting to become, you know, something. Maybe I'm not expecting everybody to read it, but this is just Canal 32. Now, if I move this way, oh, I have user 32. And this is just 2D data. So imagine I zoom out and I have more. And I have more and more and more and more and more and everything. And this is like how it looks when you process 30 million files. Looks like a universe of function calls. Each bubble represents uh, actual yell, and each bubble represents you know, the size of the, all the colors um, is how many in, you know, instance of uh, that function is being called. So now we have actually spread the distribution for all the IPIs from malware that we process in a graph, and, and that's what we actually presented. So the, the beauty of this is, this is limited zoom, sorry for that, the file is 80 megabytes. Um, but the beauty of this is to find not the ones that are, you know, not this ones, like everybody calls this ones. The, the beauty is finding like this ones, like the ones that, you know, just a few people. And this is like a simple one, HTTP API. Or the ones, you know, Sorry, it's complicated. This one's like maybe a typo somewhere. This NTU map section or this one. With this, you can actually map, you know, probably, you know, a lot of all the different things. And this is like, where are these long ones? This is a typo. Low library, yeah. Or create file in a different, this is a kernel 32 with a dot at the end, trying to masquerade the original one, right? So this is what it looks like when you process a lot of that. That's, again, the data is telling us, you know, how it looks in a universe type. So let me go back to the presentation. We call it the universe malware IPIs. That's, you know, some of the distributions for, um, some of the DLs being called and some of that. And again, this is, uh, I've never seen a, a graphic like that before. So it, uh, it looks, to me, it looks beauty out of like mess. It looks, looks beauty out of that. So we talk about the research, but we say we built a software to do the research. <laughs> and, and that's what we did. So we're going to talk a little bit of the architecture and some examples. So what I basically do is uh, is an engine and this a uh, it's a white hat guy there uh, that you know has a portal and out of that the portal calls the IPIs and um, all the IPIs is is 182 different IPIs as right now. You call those IPIs to be able to get the data, push the data, or query the data. Basically, there's an API for each of the functions for each of the file format that we have in, in the data, in the system, the, the framework. And then uh, when you submit something, it says, hey, this is the mind type being, a, I don't know, a executable. It goes through the processors. The processor has, it has a, his own plugin system that extracts each of the characteristic that each of the IPI, sorry, each of the processor uh, plugin, plugin 
uh, do. Like one, we have one plugin that extract, you know, the strings. One plugin that extract, you know, uh, perform some other uh, function like SSLD or string, different strings that process. Do. And it's, you can actually add that, and and you can actually modify the code to whatever you want and add your processor or your own plugin. So you want to do, I don't know. You like to do uh, flaws, which is a new tool now, and just code it, the, you know, being able to execute flaws for each of the file when it matches the mind type, you can just do that. And that goes to, uh, you know, the search, the codex search engine, and all of that, all that, you know, the rationality information gets spread through different MongoDB um, uh, database set or collections, uh, if you want to prefer like that, where we store the samples. And we store the metadata that we extract for each of the samples, and we store the versioning of the plugins. So we do that because maybe you develop one plugin, and then you forgot something, you want to modify the plugin, you upgrade the version, and you need to execute only just that plugin across the entire database set. So out of that, they've been, and on, in a different section is the actual web portal where you're going to see a few samples uh, in a minute. So out of that, all this code get you know, uh, been executed and give you the data in a rational way um, that you can have. So basically, with that rational information, you can you know uh, do malware comparison, you know, for each of the meta uh, metadata items that we extract for each one of them, and and you can do accurate comparison by each of the single pieces. So if you build a similarity base with the system, you can also you know out of if you say uh, this file. Uh, you run similarity and it, it, it's equal as this for whatever reason or you have this piece, you can just select one or two of the files and you create an automatically general rule out of that. So you are you're hunting for a family, you just select the files, if you get the files, and you can build maybe a general rule yeah, that will actually protect you for that given family if it stays the way it stays in a normal pattern like that. And of course they bring you uh, what we call it uh, the analyst panel, which is a website with 150 different searchable index items out of that, uh, out of each file. So the technology that's behind is we we use GridFS for um, storage of the file. We use Mongo while it's running on Ubuntu. The web is Angular. We use V3 for the graphics, all those bubbles that you saw. We use, of course, Docker for easy implementation. Um, each deployment and implementation is all coded in Python that you can actually go there and just do whatever with the code. We use Bottle as the API, and when at the very end, we use Apache. So, I want to show you some of the, let's we'll say, some of the examples that we would just be put together. So, in this case, um, one of the data that we can actually get out of the files. Are you know the the signed certificate the code that's within the file? So if someone is still a certificate, and um, and you process the file that has the certificate serial number, in this case, this is a search for for Duku Duku two actually. If you know the certificate thumbprint serial number, you can just put the certificate thumbprint serial number, and it will search for that. I will bring you that information that is there, which is the Duku. Same thing where you know a file that he himself reveals at a, a specific name. In this case, it's a, it's a malware called, from the family called Samas. Um, you can search, hey, give me oh, all the files that has a version string uh, in the parameter file name, which is, again, a characteristic of the P file with a specific name, just give me all of that. So we're not talking about hashes and talking about anything like that. We're just talking specific characteristics out of files. Give me all of that. So again, we're trying to walk away from file-based hash and going after characteristics. And another one here, um, you, you read this amazing research for for you know uh, for ESET or at that given time was for semantic. You say, you know, Statnex is using these functions to hook into the process for each of the process being executed, and is using these IPIs 
you can search for, hey, give me executables that this piece of the strings that we know is IPI, that is not referenced in the import table, so we know this piece of string within the file, give me all of that um, and tell me, well, give me all of that that has the match. And the match is this string with that particular name that is not referenced in the import table. And you have right there is 103 different versions of Stunnex, different files, different hashes, if you want to call it in that way. So we put, you know, all this, we make it, uh, uh, you know, the interface, we make it as easy as possible to malware hunters to use it to start processing files. And to be able to achieve that, we actually, we have private access to some of the, you know, largest uh, malware database set, part of the work we do for in this case, Deloitte. And um, so what we did is there's a, there's a place called APT Notes, uh, which collects all the reports from different APT actors across the years. It has 11 years right now of APT actors. And uh, we got all the hashes, all the files, not the hashes, all the files. We got all the hashes from those reports, and we collect all them, all those um, files for all those reports, and we put it in a we zip it, we put it in a file, and we upload it to our uh, um, to our Git, so everybody can actually download it. There's 7,000 files. I start processing those files, which is just a click and load, and that's it. You process the file. It takes time, of course. And uh, you can start searching and doing some stuff for comparing files, files for malware actors, APT actors, um, that they are, you know, being known. The beauty of this, of course, is open source. Again, this started as a research, and we encountered that there was nothing like quite like it the way we wanted. And, um, well, we had to build it, and might as well just share it to the world so people can process file, process malware, or process sometimes good files to determine what is all the files malware. And when I say process good files, an example for um, the Bangladesh hack, uh, we had the file. We had the Bangladesh malware, and we knew that we had the file because we searched for the original DLL uh, because within our system, it seems that someone actually uploaded the Swift, some of the Swift um, DLL files. So we knew the names of the API being called by the malware, and we put those names, and hey, the malware it was there. So again, the, the, you can go there, clone it. Uh, if you want to help, just help. We will need a lot of help and make it better. Please, let's help us to make it better. And um, I think I have a few minutes. Uh, we create also a, tweet, a Twitter account. So you can, uh, over there, you can ask uh, one of us to provide the APT password for the zip file that contains seven or roughly 7,000 malware. We just don't give it away because it's uh, kind of dangerous. So you, you direct message me or whoever in the team will send you, will give you the password. And if you want to follow the, the Twitter, we post sometimes we do uh, malware similarity. So last week, it was a uh, malware attack from, uh, I think, the people from Symantec. It was called uh, Old Enough or something like that. I don't remember now. Uh, so it turned out that um, some of the files that we process within our database, we actually have more than the actual report from Symantec. And that's actually, we say, wait, this is kind of strange. How come this guy had more? Is, is because sometimes we have files that some other vendor doesn't have. It's semantic, it doesn't have all the spreads across the world. Uh, it's not just them, it's everybody anti in the antivirus industry. So if they don't see a file, they cannot cluster the file in the same way that we do. Sometimes we get lucky and we have one file that they don't have. So we send, you know, I say, hey, this one has this percent of similarity. If you want this, you have the file do the clustering again, and maybe you have one more hash to be published in the website. So we do that, again, for free, which is not, there's no one, we just this, do this for our clients. So again, this is a Twitter account, and if you have questions, I would love 
to hear that. I don't, I'm sure I don't have all the answers, but I will try. So thank you. Questions? Thank you. Thanks for the talk. Um, you talk about Hiara rules generation. Yep. Um, when we when we select multiple malwares, do you try to generate the the minimum set of rules, or do you ju just generate a, a wide array of rules that will catch everything that that are not maybe the, the minimum set? We use we didn't want to reinvent the rules, so we use a jar hand. Um, so that uses you know has uh, four hundred megabyte database of known IPIs, so discard all that. It goes after you know some of the strings, even in Unicode, and also do code comparison. So you have you might have, depends on the file that you want to compare, what they call it a super rule, a rule that matches a certain type a certain files, or a Yara rule that matches one or two or probably even one. So that's the two ways. In the future, we think we're going to do a ja our own Jara rule generation in terms of the same search patterns that you put within the system. Um, and you can run it across the entire system. So you, at least in 30 million, you're gonna ha not going to have a uh, false positive. But as right now, we use Jarhen, which is, is for the ones we test, it's the best one. Uh, th there are some certain limitations uh, there too. Ah, oh, sorry. Uh, in the in the Twitter on the Git to make it everybody life easier, and you want to do Docker, which is built VMware and v VirtualBox. So you just download the VM, just run files, copy the files there, and start hunting. We want again help the hunters with more tools. So that's it. Any we other have time for a few more questions? If anyone else have one. Sorry if I make it too fast. You did fine. Okay, seems we're out of questions, so thank you very much. Thank you.